you want to go from JJ uh, in Northwest DC to St. Louis. That is Mayor Francis Slay, the mayor of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, and he is addressing preparations for the possibility of the release of that uh, grand jury report in Ferguson, Missouri. And as a backdrop to all this, the governor of the state, Jay Nixon, has now declared a state of emergency across Missouri. Let's listen in. And the protesters were kind of asking that the police uh, lay back a little, not to confront them. Could this move possibly incite them and make them more fearful and touch off something as opposed to what you're trying to do? The reason I'm here talking to you today is to let you know that, again, the, the, the way we view this, the guard is not going to be uh, confronting or the protesters. It will not be on the front line. Uh, you know, interacting directly with, with the uh, demonstrators. It's going to be our police officers, our police officers in the city of St. Louis. Uh, of course, um, St. Louis County is uh, going to be taking care of St. Louis County, and St. Louis City is going to be taking care of St. Louis. So our, our police officers in the city of St. Louis will be wearing their police officer uniforms. They're not going to be having, you know, the riot gear on and things like that, unless, of course, a situation would, would occur which would require them to do that to protect themselves. Um, and, and Mr. Mayor, when the decision comes out, assuming it, it might be one that the, the people don't like who are protesting, what is your advice to your constituents, to the city residents? Should they treat this like a snow day and stay at home to see how it goes? Or is it business as usual? What, what's your advice for people to stay safe? Well, at this point, uh, basically, we're, we're asking people to, and everybody's going to have to make their own decision from their own standpoint, whether, you know, what schools are going to do or what businesses are going to do. Uh, but basically, uh, our advice is to, you know, go about business as usual. Uh, and, you know, we don't know when this uh, uh, decision is going to come out or how it's going to be announced. Uh, but certainly as we get closer to that day, I mean, we, we, may, we may have a different view on exactly what should happen. But at this point, uh, we do not um, want people to feel like they have to... Um, uh, you know, panic or uh, you know, be afraid uh, at this point. Uh, but we do. We want everybody to know that we are going to have. We're doing everything we can in our power. First of all, to make sure that people and the property are going to be safe, and that the protesters can protest peaceably and can protest freely um, in in, um, in in a fashion that, that they like to do, as long as they are not yeah, they are nonviolent. Do, do you yep. think there could be an increase in lawlessness in the city if Darren Wilson is not indicted? You know, I could speculate, but I I. I and I could speculate like anybody else. Certainly, I will tell you this: there's been a lot of a high level of emotion and anger in our in our region uh, since August the 9th, uh, and understandably so. Um, and so, we just have to make sure that we understand that as we go forward. And uh, I do think that you know most people would believe that, depending on what the results uh, of the of the grand jury decision, it will probably have something to do with the reaction is now. Uh, what that all means, I can't say, and I'm certainly not going to speculate, but I will tell you that we are, we are going to be prepared from a law enforcement standpoint uh, to make sure that people and property is for safe, as well as uh, the protesters, demonstrators, uh, who have an opportunity to express their First Amendment rights and to protest in a peaceful way. Uh, and at the same time, um, you know, we want to make sure that uh, uh, we're going to have the resources necessary in, in, the, in the event there is any kind of violence or anything of that nature. Mr. Mayor, do you agree with the governor's decision to call on the National Guard or not, and why? I think I, I agree with the governor's decision, and this is why. First of all, we don't know what's going to happen or when it's going to happen or you know, what the decision is going to be or what the reaction is going to be. Um, I think we need to make sure that we are, we are prepared uh, for whatever may happen. Uh, I think his decision to, to ahead of time to let everybody know what they're going to do so we can plan for it was a good idea. And I also think our approach uh, to, to use the guard in a secondary role and a backfill role rather than a frontline role is, a, is the right decision is as well. Is this a learning lesson? In other words, the first time the National Guard was on the front line, you saw the reaction. Yes. So is this learned from the past and change it? And if so, how are you modifying it? Yes. First of all, yes, this is, we've learned a lot. Uh, we, and I'm talking about collectively in the region, and I think cities and towns across the country have learned as well in terms of how the, what happened in the reaction uh, based upon how it was approached in the past. 
We've talked a lot about it. We've also, and I think something else that's very different now than uh, several weeks ago is that we, again, collectively within the city and the county, law enforcement, uh, civic leaders, uh, community leaders, and leaders within the uh, demonstration community, the demonstrators, have been talking together, working uh, you know, out issues. Uh, there has been a list of, of um, different uh, asks within the demonstrated community that we have responded to. Uh, I've talked personally with protesters myself. So I think the point is that we the, keep opening that line of communication has really helped us understand where some of the, you know, uh, um, um, you know, maybe some of where some of the mistakes that were made as, as it was approached in the past, how we can do a better job doing it. But I do think the flow of communications has helped us not only do a better job from the law enforcement front, but also, uh, you know, going into it, but also it helps us do a better job, um, you know, in case there's something that comes up with, you know, on the spot. Uh, whether where the protests are happening, we have a communication strategy where we can work and talk together so that we can hopefully do what we can to uh, dispel dis discerns, concerns or uh, address a situation that arises. Now, there, I can tell you this, we can't predict everything that may come up or how, but the fact that we're talking and, uh, and working together to, to make sure that people's First Amendment right, rights are, are um, are protected, but also, you know, the, we, we've had the message out, we are not going to tolerate lawlessness. We're not going to tolerate people violating the law. We're not going to tolerate violence. The other thing I want to make sure it's very clear is, and, and I know that everyone should understand that, that our law enforcement officers are, are professional. They have really exercised a tremendous amount of restraint, professionalism, uh, in, in approaching, um, you know, the, the situations that they've had to approach uh, in the past relative to the protesters. Uh, again, we, we're continuing to learn and we're improving our, our, our um, communication. But these officers are human beings. They are out there, to, they are trained to protect our, our, our families, to protect our neighborhoods, to protect our properties. They're putting their lives on the line, they're risking their lives to help protect us, protect property, and help protect people's First Amendment rights. Uh, I want you to know that uh, I'm very proud of our officers. Uh, I, I support them 100%, and uh, I think uh, we should we should have a, I think a higher level of appreciation uh, now based on all the things that uh, they're addressing and how they're handling it. And I certainly do myself. Why are you Why are you in fact insisting that the National Guard be in a secondary position and not on the front line? What is it that you learned that makes you not want to put them on the front line? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. First and foremost. The men and women of our police department know our city the best. They live in the city. They know the makeup of the city. They know uh, the neighborhoods better. They know people in our city better. They feel much more comfortable here in our city of St. Louis, protecting our neighborhoods. The National Guard comes from all over the, the state of Missouri. Some of them have um, you know, direct uh, local law enforcement, uh, maybe military police um, uh, experience. But many of them don't have experience um, you know, with protests and peaceful protests like our police officers do, and we've had it in the past. So I think that's a big difference. Um, these are our police officers, these are their neighborhoods, and uh, we feel much more comfortable having our police officers, um, you know, uh, dealing directly with protesters in, in various settings. Having them in a secondary role really does give our officers uh, a little more leeway and a little more uh, time to address of the stuff that they're going to address, and they can protect, you know, certain uh, assets within our city, you know, shopping centers and things like that, uh, that may need a little extra uh, support. So the idea is, um, and, and I also think that we've learned a lot based upon how it was approached first from a military standpoint. You know, we, we, do, we do not want to make it this look like it's a, uh, a military, mil militarization of our police department or, um, um, and we want to make sure that people know that these cops are just there to, to keep peace, um, and they're not—they're not there to, you know, clash with, with protesters. Hey, Aaron, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah. Mayor, one one okay. question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible? Okay. Is it possible we'll never see the National Guard, or are they coming regardless of if, if, if whether or not a protest turns violent or not? Will they be here pre-announcement? Will they be here? No, my, they're going to have to. Here's my understanding is this, but you can ask the governor directly. 
it takes some time to deploy them. So my expectation is they're going to be here because we don't know when the decision is, is coming down. So my expectation is they're going to be here before soon. Before, probably before any probably sometime this week is my understanding, although um, I didn't get the direct uh, line of communication on that one. Uh, but they will be here earlier. Uh, they're not going to wait to a decision before they're being deployed because it takes time to move them from around the state, move them into the city of St. Louis. So you'll probably be seeing something this week, it would be my guess. Uh, so I, I wanted to let you know that as well. Are you concerned about the toll that this is taking on the economic That is the uh, mayor of St. Louis, Francis Slay, uh, meeting reporters there in St. Louis. And his news conference comes a short time after Missouri's governor, Jay Nixon, declared a state of emergency and activated the Missouri National Guard in advance of that grand jury decision about if a white police officer will be charged in the fatal shooting of a black 18-year-old in the St. Louis suburb of Ferguson. The governor said the National Guard would assist state and local police as needed in case there was civil unrest when the grand jury's decision is announced. No indication of an announcement, of it in fact, being imminent. No specific date for a decision to be revealed about with whether Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson would face charges for shooting Michael Brown on August the 9th. Live coverage for you here on News Channel 8. Coming up on 10 minutes till 4 o'clock, we'll step away for just a bit. When we return, Devin Lucy's back to update the forecast, and it is quite a forecast. Back with that right after this.